to see the, how to obtain the differential equation for a truss member. So here we'll try to obtain the differential equation that is equal to E A D to U D X two that is equal to the force body force. Okay, thereafter we'll try to see we'll try to see if the point force is acting, then how to write the differential equation if both the force point force as well as body force both are acting, how to obtain the differential equation. Okay, so here what is our aim? Our aim is to obtain the governing differential equation for a truss member. So here we will consider one truss member that is subjected to a body force. The body force amount is the Fx, and that magnitude of the Fx is that Q Newton per meter. That is basically load is given Newton per meter. For example, if you have a bar like this, for example, if this bar is you are of 5 meter length, okay. Then this point will experience zero force. This point will experience, if you consider one meter stick, this force will experience one meter force. This force, this point will experience two meter, two newton force. This one three newton. This is four newton. And last one, that the top point will experience five newton force. This can be basically explained in different way. For example, one monkey is hanging, okay, here like this, and and he basically holding this one bar and another and he is holding another monkey. So here another monkey is holding this one. Okay, so now here you can realize this hand of the monkey only will realize the force of this first monkey. But here this hand basically realize the weight of that two monkey, both the monkey. Okay, so like that you can say that as the length is increasing, okay. This point will experience our total force. So here, basically, we will try to see that uh, how the government differential equation is working. For that, we need uh, basically we need our stress relationship, stress strain relationship. From that, we will try to drive. Okay, so we know we know that stress is equal to force by we know that stress is equal to force by area. Okay, stress is equal to force by area. So what we will do? We'll take one step. We'll take one step, very small step. You can say that it is infinitely small, very small step. Okay, the step that you can assume. Okay, that much of small step we are taking. Okay, so if you take that small step, okay, and then see, then what will happen at this point? Okay, in this point, this amount, this basically part will contribute as a force. Okay, this amount will contribute as a force okay, the way I explained. So the force will be here, your Q, that is your Newton per meter length into the length, length is here your L minus X. So basically total Q into L minus X amount force will act and our will be our area. Okay, so area means that whatever the area is there, that area to consider. Okay, so our Stress is basically at distance x, that is basically your q into l minus x by the area. Okay, so here we are considering a very small step and we are calculating the stress at that step. Okay, so this one, this line is very close together. For picturization, I basically explain in that way. Okay, now this is the stress. Now, if you want to calculate the strain, so strain basically to see that how much basically changes length occur how much length changes so here in this point basically here if you see the some point was there okay and initially it was in u position now due to that due to this force acting here that position changed to u2 okay now basically our strain will be u2 minus u1 by original length that our step okay that way Basically, you can write that is a strain is equal to change in length by original length like that. Okay. Now again, we know we know that x per Hooke's law, the stress is proportional to strain. In that way, we can write the stress is equal to the Young modulus into the strain. Now, what we'll do? We'll try to basically write that Young modulus that is equal to stress by strain. Okay. So that basically we can write now. What we'll do, we'll put the value of the stress and we'll put the value of strain here. We put then 
you can write that is equal to e is equal to the stress by strain that is equal to this value. Now what we'll do, we'll basically multiply this one with this one. Then we can get e du dx again. Again, there will be some value here. So if you write, if you multiply, you can get e from this one, basically try to obtain e du dx that is equal to q bracket l minus x by a. Now you can write e a du dx that is equal to q into l minus x. Okay, that equation basically we have done. Okay, now if one more time, okay, if you take derivative one more time here, if you take the derivative one more time here, so it, this side will be e a du u dx two. Okay, and this side will be your minus q force. That will be your minus q force. Okay, now this is your the body force. Okay, now question is that if only point load is acting there, then what will be our governing differential equation? After the governing differential equations, a class member subjected to point loading or combination of the board. Okay, so this part we have already obtained that a truss subjected to body force, the body force that basically acting in the positive x direction, and that is your value is your q newton per meter. In that case, our governing differential equation comes in terms of like this E A d to U dx2 is equal to minus Q. Okay. But here you have to know that only this equation is not sufficient to solve the truss problem. Along with that governing differential equation, we need to specify what are the essential boundary equation you have or what are the natural boundary equation we have. So essential boundary conditions basically deals with the displacement kind of boundary conditions. So here we have q is equal to zero and x is at x is equal to zero. This is our essential boundary conditions, and we have another boundary condition that is our natural boundary conditions. So natural boundary conditions basically deals with the force type of things. So here we don't have any force. We are doing the don't have any point force. So our natural boundary conditions here that E A d to u dx2 that will be zero here since we don't have any point force that at x equal to l that will be zero basically you have to specify in this way so what i want to emphasize is that only governing differential equation is not sufficient to solve a problem we have to specify what are the essential boundary conditions or what are the displacement boundary conditions we have and what are the natural boundary conditions we have Okay, so this part we have learned. Now, if a truss member is subjected to point force, so here we have point force at x is equal to L, and we have another condition that your displacement is equal to zero at x is equal to zero. So we have two conditions. We have essential boundary condition or displacement boundary condition that our displacement is equal to zero at x is equal to zero, and we have another boundary condition that is our natural boundary condition that at x is equal to L we have the force is F2 that here we are writing that E A D to U D X2 that will be your F2. Okay, so here you have to keep it in your mind that this is writing in terms of positive. Okay, and here we are writing in terms of negative. So why I am saying because here you just see both body force and that both body force acting along this and point force also acting along this. Okay. So while deriving this equation, while deriving this equations, we obtain this is equal to minus q. So while deriving this equation, we assume that force is acting along this. This is we have basically this we assume as a positive. But at the end, we obtain this equation basically like this. Okay. But here also it is acting positive as a point force. So here point force we are basically representing that E A d t u d x two that is equal to point force f two. Okay. Now. If we try to see the governing differential equation, if we try to see the governing differential equation, okay, in that case, what happened? You have to write the governing differential equation as a E A d to u d x two equal to zero for the class member subject to point loading. Okay, so here you can see we are not changing anything. We are just keeping, we are just keeping that Q force as a zero. So 
in this equation you are just keeping q force as a zero and we are writing in terms of like this here this part can be taken out if ea is a constant so you can write d, d to u dx2 is equal to zero okay since we don't have any body force so this force will be zero now again i am saying that this conditions this uh, your differential form this differential form is not sufficient to solve this problem because this only will specify that there is no body force acting in the body but if you have point force then that point force you have to specify as a natural boundary point okay so our natural boundary condition is there that our natural boundary condition is there that is our that is our ea d to u dx2 at x equal to l is equal to f2 okay that is positive f2. okay now if you have both the forces if you have body force as well as point force in that case our governing differential equation will be like this ea same thing ea dt u dx2 is equal to or minus force okay along with that we have to specify our our bond condition that is u is equal to 0 at x equal to 0 so here also same thing u is equal to 0 at x equal to 0 and this is our point force at x equal to l okay so here we have learned that that only governing differential equation is not sufficient to solve problem to solve a structural problem along with the governing differential equation we need to specify what are the essential boundary conditions we have and what are the natural boundary conditions we have okay along with that boundary conditions and your differential equations we can solve our problem okay so in the total you can see here we have learned that that for a trans member subjected to a body force, in that case our governing differential equation look like Ea d to u dx2 is equal to minus q. That q basically newton per meter, basically this one. Okay. And this condition is not this condition or this governing differential equation is not sufficient to solve the problem. Along with this, we need to specify what are the Essential boundary condition we have, essential boundary condition basically deals with the displacement type of things, u is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 for this trust problem. And since we don't have any point load, so we don't have any natural boundary condition for this problem. But if you have point load, in that case, you have to specify along with you have to specify essential boundary conditions and your natural boundary conditions. So along with the differential equation, you need to specify both the conditions, then only you will be able to solve. Okay. I hope you got some idea. Thank you.